musicians just to play something this whole Scripture lessons today will be coming from Acts. I will be reading verses 51 through 56 in the seventh chapter. That's Acts chapter 7, verses 51 through 56. chapter 7, verse 51 through 56. I'll be starting at verse 51, and verse 51 says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now betrayed and murdered, who have received the law by the deposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to their heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being filled with the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And we're going to be talking about, do you see what I see? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we open our eyes to you so that we will see this morning what you see. We will see what you would have for us to see. So, Lord, we thank you for this word that's going to come forth, and you will move us to the side, Father, that you will come shining through as a ray of light as we look in the scriptures for direction and for confirmation and affirmation. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. If you know Acts chapter 7, you know the deacon Stephen did his major sermon in that book. If you don't know Acts chapter 7, I'm telling you, Stephen preached in chapter 7. Amen? Amen. So we find in Acts chapter 7, the deacon Stephen giving his first and really his last message. And he was given a message, and the reason why I'm breaking this sermon up 
Because just before he closed it, something strange happened. Something that never happened before happened in this message. And he saw something that he never ever seen before. And it says in Acts chapter 50, um, verse 55 in the seventh um, ver, um, chapter, it says, but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of um, God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Then it says in 56, Acts chapter 7, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now, Stephen saw a couple of miraculous things. First of all, he saw God. And he saw the Son of Man, he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. But before Stephen saw anything, he had to have something. And before Stephen saw heaven open up, before he saw God, before he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God, he had to be filled with something, and that something that he had to be filled with was the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit does more than just make us shout in church. You know, because people shout and say, well, they must have had the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is more than a good shout. Even though if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's going to make you shout. But it's more than a good shout. The Holy Spirit gives us vision. So it says Stephen was full, and when Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, he looked up and he saw, so the Holy Spirit that filled him gave him vision. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And so when Stephen was looking up, I wondered, could anybody see what Stephen saw when he looked up to heaven? Because as he was preaching to these people and as they were getting ready to stone him, he said, wait a minute, hold your rocks. I see something I never saw before. I'm looking up and I see the glory of God and I just don't see the glory of God. I see the Son of Man standing on his right hand. So he saw something that he never saw before and because he had vision, people got mad at him. People got mad at him. They picked up those rocks and they were ready to throw them anyway. But now that he's seeing something that he, that, that they don't see, he's getting mad. And I'm going to tell you something now. When you get vision, people get mad at you when you get vision. When you start saying, oh, we can do it this way, we can do it better, we can do it more effectively, people get mad at you. What you looking at? But I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit fills you, you're going to have vision and see things other people don't see. And what happened with um, um, Stephen is he saw something that nobody else saw before. He was talking about Jesus. He was talking about how Jesus saved him. What happened to Jesus on the cross? How he was, how he was died on the cross. How he was buried. But not just how he was buried. Stephen talking about how he rose again from the dead. And now that he rose again from the dead, he's up there in glory and they couldn't take it. And people with vision, people can't take too well. Because people with vision, I mean truly real vision, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's not the vision they can't take, it's what you're filled with. That's getting to them. So here's Stephen filled with vision, and they, they didn't know what to do with it. Because the Holy Ghost, I tell you, the Holy Spirit gives you more than a good shot. The, the Holy Spirit, what it gives us, it helps us. Because wherever we need help, the Holy Spirit gives us vision and it's our helper. The Holy Spirit gives us dreams that we can't dream. The Holy Spirit gives us things that we don't know how to give. And I tell you, if you don't know how to get the Spirit, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you before I leave this message, I'm going to tell you. How do you get this? How do you get this vision? How do you see things that you don't see normally? And how do you get filled with this power that enables us to see the things that we need to see? And we know that Stephen saw it because Stephen said, I see the glory of God and Jesus standing on his right hand. And if you know anything about scripture, you know Jesus don't stand. They didn't say Jesus stood for a whole lot of stuff. But Stephen saw him standing. And standing was a symbol of approval and a power of authority and assurance. And when he saw Jesus standing on the right hand, because in the other part of the scriptures, it talked about Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. But when Stephen saw him, he was standing. Because if you can make Jesus stand up for something you did, you did something. When, and let me tell you, whenever you see a good performance or a majorly good performance, what did you do? Give them a what? Standing. 
Because it was good. If it was a side performance, you don't stand up and do it. Let's tell the truth. If it was a side, you don't stand up. But if it was a good performance, Stephen, he was doing something good, and Jesus stood in recognition of what he did. So the first thing, let's look at what Stephen saw. Before he saw anything, he was filled with the Spirit. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that gave him the vision. Now, how do I get this power of the Holy Spirit that gives us vision? Get, having the power of the Holy Spirit isn't just coming and joining church. If we want the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to ask for it. We need to ask for it. It just don't come to you because. Then I know a whole lot of good church goals. And they raise all kinds of hell when they get out of church. Amen. Truth be told, they raise all kinds of hell in the church too. Amen. So joining the church isn't what fills us with the Spirit. What fills us with the Spirit is we need to ask God to fill us with the Spirit. Uh, Stephen, he didn't just get the Holy Spirit because the elders had laid hands on him and they prayed. And the Spirit came upon him. In any instance in the Bible where we see it, the Spirit will come upon you after you ask and after you pray. It's just not an automatic process. Just because you pass from one grade to another grade, you're not automatically sixth grade smart if you got out of fifth grade. No, you got to do some things in the sixth grade in order to qualify to be for the sixth grade so you can go to the next grade. You know, just because I say I'm going to be a doctor, that doesn't make me a doctor. I will have to go to school to get some kind of knowledge in order to do that. So just because you come to church don't mean it just automatically happens. We need to do something. Meaning we need to study. We need to know what God's word said. We just don't get about being in the house. You need to do something in the house. Man, I tell you, I was in the eighth grade. I went to the eighth grade, you know, flying on business. I never went to class. I don't even know how I passed. But anyway, the eighth grade didn't make me a ninth grade, and they just passed me on anyway by the grace of God, and I had to catch up. But I would have done a whole lot better had I learned what I needed to learn in the eighth grade. Then I wouldn't have to sweat so hard in the night. And some of us sweating hard now because we're just trying to get it. We're just trying to get it through, you know, well, my mother went to church, well, my daddy went to church, and yeah, they sat on this pew up, and it, that was good for them. I'm glad because they got it. But if you riding on that, you ain't get it. So in order to get the power and get the vision of the Holy Spirit, we need to ask God, God, fill me with what I need. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he will come to you if you ask but we need to stop long enough like our backer did. We need to stop long enough to wait in our bedrooms or in our watch towers or wherever we are going to wait for God to come to us so we can get filled with the power from on high that can give us vision so that we can see around these corners. You know, most, a lot of the trouble in life can be averted if we have vision. If we have vision. You know, all you got to do is see what God sees and he will give you the solution to the situation before you get there, before you crash land. But a lot of times we don't have it. We take God out of the scenario, and when we take God out of the scenario, we're going to crash. We're going to totally crash. So as Stephen was looking up in the glory of heaven, I wondered, does, did anybody see what he saw when he looked in heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on his right hand? Did anybody see what Stephen saw? I don't know. I doubt it. Because they still had the rocks in their hand, and they hadn't thrown them yet, but they still had the rocks, and they were still waiting. And some of you right now, when you go to work tomorrow, somebody waiting to throw a rock because you got vision. Because you got vision, and you think you know that something happened good because of what God put in it, and somebody waiting to hit you with the rock. They waiting to hit you with, and, and they waiting to hit you with a rock. And you know, I got one word for you: duck. <laughs> If you don't duck, it ain't because of me, because I told you to duck. Hey, amen. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Yes. You know, so God wants us to have vision, but we can only see what God sees if we have what God has and what Jesus promised us, and that's the power of the Holy Ghost in us. So when we have the power of the Holy Spirit, it, what that does, it, it, it enables us to see things that will try to detract us and get us off track. So when we have the Holy Spirit in us, it enables us to turn and go with places where we won't get hurt or won't crash land when we have the Spirit in us. So when Stephen saw this, you know, he was seeing a vision of what God is and what Jesus is and everything that's going on. And because he had vision, people wanted to do away with him. And look, I'm saying this, but don't let this kill your vision. Because God will have you if you have vision. 
Because if you have vision, I mean true vision, God gave it to you. Do you see what I see? Now, Stephen, being fooled by the Holy Spirit, was able to see many things that we couldn't see. But the first thing Stephen was able to see was the glory of God. He was able to see the glory of God. And when he was able to see the glory of God, that opened up a whole world to him. See, when you see God's glory, you know, many won't see that when he is in it. We see because we ask God to come, first of all, into our lives. That's why we see in the first place. And when he comes into our lives, he comes into our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we can see what God has done in our life. Because the power of the Holy Spirit will allow us to see where we came from. See, this whole month that we set aside for, um, you know, Black History Month, you know, we look back at the past, but we see where we had come from. And, you know, you got to see where you come from, because if you don't know where you come from, you surely don't know where you're going. So through this uh, month and through, you know, our heritage, you know, we get this vision and we see this through the um, power of God. So God's anointing and God's vision allows us to see where we come from, because you got to know where you came from. You got to know where you came from. Because if you look, I mean, you haven't been looking good your whole life. You haven't been looking like you've been looking now. You know, people didn't see you when you were hungry, when you didn't have clothes, when you didn't even have enough money for bus fare. People didn't see you like that. So see, you ain't been like this your whole life. You got to know where you came from. You got to have vision. And vision will allow you to have hindsight. Because sometimes people forget where they come from. You know, we be turning our nose up at people in need. You forgot what you was in need. Somebody helped you. Nobody turned their nose up at you. Somebody prayed for you. We got to have vision for hindsight. We got to have vision for today. We need to know that God has something for us to do right now. You know, we look at our brothers and sisters that are in need, and we see them in need right now, and they need help right now. And, you know, if they need a $5 bill, we say, let me pray for you. They don't need bread. They need a five. <laughs> And you're praying to do a thing to make a man. I learned that being a preacher. I don't want prayer. Prayer. Look, I go in the hospital. I'm a hospital chaplain. And then I walk in there sometimes and I say, Do you want, do you want me to pray with you? They say, No. <laughs> then they say, Preacher, get out of my room. And you know what I do? I say, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just come back later. If they don't want it, I can't force it on. See, I mean, and, you know, I got vision to see that now. But sometimes we just want to pray for somebody to make us feel good, not to make them feel good. Because if somebody don't want your prayer, don't pray for them. Amen. All you going to do is upset them. Amen. I learned that. I've been cussed out, so I learned that. <laughs> because if somebody don't want to pray, you don't pray for them. You know, they will appreciate you more just by fulfilling their request. Amen. They say, don't want, hey, fine. Because it's not about you, it's about Jesus. Right. And it's about getting Jesus across to them. And if you do what they say, you will get Jesus across a whole lot faster. But that's about knowing where you are right now. In the present, to bless people's needs right now, where they are. And also, he will allow us to see things in the future. Because nobody, nobody knows the future. Amen. Nobody knows it but God, because God's already there. You know, and he, he may not give us every step, but he sure will help us to dodge the potholes in life as they come up if we just stay on him. If we stay fixed on him, he will allow us to envision those powers so that when we get to that power, we'll be able to jump over it or go around it. But, you know, we got to have that vision of God. You know, because some things you just know going to, you know, happen. You know, from the power of God, and he, will, he, gives, us, he gives us that, force, that um, foresight to know that, look, if you go this way, you're going to crash land. If you go this way, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. So as we have vision, we need to know that, you know, getting with God and having him in us, he will give us the vision that we see. But the thing is, do you see what I see? And I wonder, does anybody see what Stephen saw? And as we see that, we know that, you know, we... Get, we look at our friends and we look at our family and we look at our co-workers and we got this, you know, people get upset with you. People get upset with you and they think you're kind of spooky. You know, because you know some things, but some things you just naturally know are going to happen. Amen? Amen? You just naturally know they're going to happen. You just naturally know they're going to happen. And you don't naturally, you know naturally know they're going to happen through the power of God in you. Because he would help us from all adversities and all trouble. So, as we looking at that, the next thing Stephen saw was he saw Jesus standing by the Father's side. 
Jesus standing by the Father's side. The heavens opened up, and he saw Jesus standing by the Father's side. Stephen spoke boldly for the Lord to the point that Jesus stood on his feet because he gave a bold testimony and witness to him. And can, can we see Jesus standing for something that we did? I mean, did we do something so well that Jesus stood up? See, when we're here to worship, we're not here to worship to be entertained. I, I know we say that, but truth matters. We're not here to worship to be entertained. We're here to worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I'm not here to entertain Jesus. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here because of Jesus Christ. We're all here because of Jesus Christ. So are we worshiping in a way that Jesus would stand on his feet? Or do we just want a good show? Now, look, we benefit from worship, you know, when we do it properly, but we're not here to get up and have a good show. You know, I, I told this in Bible study, you know, people come to church, and you know, they come to church and they say stuff like, well, I went to church, but I was bored. I was bored. That was a boring service. No kidding, the service wasn't for you. It was for Jesus. So if you were bored, you did something wrong. Because if you bored, you bored Jesus. <laughs> If you want that, how do you think Jesus feels? I'm bored. And if Jesus is bored, you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. So you, people need to stop saying that. If you're bored, it's because of you. I used to get basement parties, those blue light your basement parties. And I'm telling you, I like my parties to be live. If I saw a wallflower, I put them out. I saw a dead. My mother said, Warren, you can't put them out. Oh, yes, I can. Well, give me back that quarter. No. Hey, Amen. You ain't got to get out No, if you're going to go down there, you got to dance. You got to do something. But you ain't going to be standing on the wall because nobody's going to say it was born in my heart. Hey, somebody tell me what I'm talking about. No, that's a guy I don't know. I'm talking about you bored. It ain't for you. Don't bore Jesus up in here. You know, if you got a child, child, you know, if you, look, you don't got to have a child to be bored. You can just be quiet. And just be quiet. Just, mm, 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 mm. I got it. <laughs> you know, because we all worship in different ways. Everybody not a shouter. You know, I ain't really, I ain't a real shouter. You know, but when I got it, I got it made, man. Amen. I'm a head bomb.
but the glory of God is always with me. Amen. So throw your sticks, throw your stones. I see God, the glory of God, and Jesus standing up. So throw whatever you can throw. God, fill me with your spirit so I can see your presence in my life. Oh, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? We are never alone when Jesus Christ is with us. When we just give him all the praise. When we open our eyes and just give them all the praise and all the worship, you will be able to see the glory of God and Jesus standing too. Because somebody will be able to know what you see. And you will know what you see because you will see what you see. Just want to know, do you see what I see? That's all I want to know. I see the glory of God and Jesus Christ standing. With his right hand. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We open ourselves up to you. That we will see what Stephen saw. Your glory. And Jesus standing on the right hand. Standing because of the way we give ourselves totally to you. 129 years we've been in this body. Saints have gone by that we can name and some of the names have been forgotten. But we stand here just continuing to give you the praise for everything that you have done. So we thank you for our faithfulness and we thank you for the faithfulness and for the blessing of this congregation today. That we've done all of this, all this worship, all this praise, and all this singing, and all this prayer, just for you, Lord. So as we prepare to give this invitation, to give this invitation, because somebody here will know that all of this is for them to come across, to be in a fellowship like none other, as the fellowship of believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time and this opportunity. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be here today and you don't have a church home.